that was a Tom Cruise movie that I wound up being very heavily involved in. I, I was there. I was there from the beginning. I was there in every aspect of creating the makeup because it was, again, one of these special makeups that had to be done by, uh, you know, really interesting makeup artists. And my previous experience didn't hurt because I had done a make big makeup movie and I knew what that was all about and what it would take. Clearing out Times Square was one of the biggest coups that, that, I mean, because at the very beginning when Tom was in Spain with Nicole and they were prepping uh, for the other movie, he called me up and he says, we're doing this movie and we're gonna do it. it wasn't called Vanilla Sky then. He says, we're gonna do this movie and we're gonna need to clear out Times Square. Can you do it? Uh, we need to clear out Times Square for a day. What do you think? And I said, you know, I said, of course we can. You know, I mean, it was the, it was the uh, kind of comment that only an idiot makes <laughs> or, or somebody who feels very, very empowered and believes they can do it. And I really did think I could do it. I really did. But I didn't know what it would take. And I had a great co-producer, line producer in New York with me, uh, Don Lee. And Don and I went to New York and we went to the mayor's office and we said, look, we have this scene we want to do. We'd like to clear Times Square. And they laughed at us. I said, no, 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 no really. We, wanna, we, we don't need it for a long time. Um, would you let us create a plan to show you how it could be done so that it creates the least amount of difficulty for the city? And, you know, they said, you can do whatever you want, but I, I highly doubt we're going to be willing to let you close down Times Square. So we hired a separate location manager um, just for that location. We, he had eight weeks, no not eight, about six weeks we gave him and his job was to get to know every business from 57th Street to 39th Street on both sides of 7th Avenue and Broadway and all of the cross streets, what was there, create a map, uh, which we did, we, we even built a model, I think. We had the art department build us a little model of that area. And we realized a few things were in our favor. That all the traffic from uh, on, on Times Square and 7th Avenue at that time all ran downtown from 57th Street on both Broadway and on 7th Avenue. So if you closed it off at 57th Street, no cars could get into the streets going downtown. But you did have the cross streets, and the cross streets were an issue. So um, literally what we had to do was find a way to close that area from 8th Avenue, which is one block, you know, one block uh, west, to 6th Avenue, which is one block east, so that there would be no cross traffic during the time that we were shooting. We, it, was, it was coming up on November, and we were going to have to shoot it in November. It was, we designed the shot, it was one shot. And the shot was, there's an island in the middle of between 7th Avenue and, and, uh, and Broadway, uh, right in the middle of the street. And we felt that if we put a crane, a big Titan crane on that, and uh, a platform on the crane, so that, you know, with railing around it, way up high, okay. So the highest point was a platform on top of a crane. The low, when the crane was, when the, when the arm came down to the ground, somebody could step on or off the crane. So we figured, the idea of the shot is, you have Tom Cruise driving in a Ferrari, he drives down Times Square, and it's totally empty. He gets out of his car, so the camera is in front of him. You see the car come down Times down uh, Broadway, and it's coming straight down Broadway, and there's nothing anywhere. There's nobody, no, nothing. Comes down Broadway. He sees there's nothing there. He stops the car in the middle of the street. He gets out of the car and starts to walk around, starts to turn to look the other way. So we had a man on a... <laughs> on a wheelchair with a steady cam on. The man with the wheelchair is facing the car coming north. So as the car comes north, 
the, uh, and Tom gets out of the car, the wheelchair starts to turn. Uh, as Tom is turning, it turns to see his face. And as it turns, there was an arm up on the, I mean, the, the, the uh, crane is all, all the way up. So uh, out, of, out of picture. As the wheelchair turns and we're facing Tom, uh, the arm comes down to the street level. The steady cam guy gets off the wheelchair and steps onto the crane. And by this time, Tom is now, instead of you're facing this way, he's turned around and he's facing downtown. And as he starts to run, the crane arm goes up, 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 up and sees him running downtown and there's nothing downtown. So it's a totally empty both ways and the, the base of the crane was out of the shot, just the way it was framed. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it, it was, it was one, now we, we rehearsed it um, three times. We rehearsed it on a, on a weekend in a parking lot someplace else to make sure we could make all those complicated moves for the cameraman, the wheelchair, the grips pulling away the wheelchair so the guy could get on and the move and make it all feel very smoothly. And we had the best uh, steady cam operator in the world. I mean, a, an amazingly great uh, guy in New York named Larry McConkey, who's just brilliant. And he does all the biggest movies. Anyway, we did it in a parking lot. Okay, we, we pretty much got it down to a few minutes, you know, the whole thing. Um, we, timed the, uh, we timed the stoplights to see how long a time period between stoplights it would take before traffic started again between every stoplight. And then the weekend before we did it on a... Uh, I think it was either, no, it was probably a Sunday night because it had to be done at a certain time of day. It had to be done at six in the morning uh, because there wasn't enough light in, in November in the sky until around six. So um, we got the city, we asked the city to give us from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., that's all we needed. We said we need that amount of time, has to be on a Sunday, and we will be out of there, and you know, by 10 o'clock we're gone. We can't shoot anymore, and traffic's released. So uh, they worked it out so that, uh, oh, and, and the weekend before, we didn't do any traffic control. We just, we just put our crane there to see if we could do an entire take within the cycle of one light change on the, uh, you know, which is about, it's two minutes or whatever it is, we made it. We were able to do it. So we, so we, we had the timing down. We had the information about how to do it down. And we went back to the city. We gave them all the information. We showed them the map. We showed them what we're going to do. We had, we took videos of exactly how we had done everything. And the, and the topper of it is we brought Tom Cruise into the office. We asked Tom to come with us to convince the head of, uh, and he said, sure, I'll do it, what, anything, whatever it takes. So w we brought Tom with us, and he went to the uh, film commissioner's office, and he said, look, I promise you we will do it, and if anything goes wrong, we'll stop, we'll do whatever, you know, you have, what, and, and this New York has, has uh, tactical police that they assign to you that you don't pay for. So they assigned a lot of police, and we also paid for a lot of production assistance so that we could have production assistance on the corner of every, every cross street, so, you know, inside the street, to lock it down, so, to lock it down so nobody could get through. So just when we were shooting, if a car was coming up, we'd say, just hold up, hold up, hold up, and he'd have a sign, and the, shoot, the shot was only, as I said, three minutes, so it wasn't a tremendously long time. We also found that most of the businesses were closed until 10 o'clock. So we didn't have to deal with too many businesses. We could never have paid the businesses because there's too many of them. I mean, we would have had to pay everybody a fortune and it would have been a negotiation. So the only thing we did, there was a, there was a Howard Johnson's which had 
coffee. We bought out all their coffee, and we, 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 we had coffee wagons on the side streets in front of two hotels. So if anybody came out, we'd give them free coffee and a donut, you know, just to sit, stand still for a while. We had two PAs in the subway station, which was right so that nobody came out while the actual shot was going on. And we probably had about 50 walkie-talkies in, with cops and PAs and everything else. We did the shot. Remember, this was pre-9-11. This was 19... Uh, we did this in... 2000. 2000. Yeah, yeah. It was in 2000. So uh, my guess is after 2000, uh, 2001 uh, and 9-11, and I don't think that's even a possibility anymore. Plus, they changed the street. They put in all kinds of other things since then. But it was, it was not a visual effect. The only visual effects that were used in the scene were on signs. They, because uh, Cameron wanted to change a couple of the, what was going on on the signs on the street. But the actual street stuff was entirely live action right there. It was cool. I mean, it was a, it was a great thing to have done, but uh, it was definitely not easy. And, I'm, and, I, and I guarantee it was pretty costly. <laughs> <laughs>